Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development. Uh, you may be wondering why I am speaking today. Uh, uh, you may or may not be aware of the fact that we have lost a very near and dear friend, uh, Sandy Newell, um, passed away this week, and we are continuing uh, her work uh, and so far as we're able, because no one could ever replace Sandy. Um, but we are glad you're here today with us, and um, we want to hear from you. Um, we have a number of uh, items or topics on the list today that we could discuss, if you would like. But we're interested also in hearing what you have to say. I know that Sandy was a, a wonderful person to stir conversation. And I want to tell you, in her memory, we are wearing hats. Um, Sandy was a huge hat fan, and she uh, enjoyed wearing them. And so we thought, in honor of her legacy, we would wear hats today. So I hope that sometime today or ne next week or this week, you will put on a hat and think of Sandy. Uh, one of the topics we have on our list is um, or, uh, Amy, did you want yeah, to talk? Yeah, if I could. Amy wants um, to jump in. Thank oh, yeah. you, Claudia. Um, this is Amy Johnson. Um, hello, everyone, and good afternoon. And I just feel like, and I'm, I'm going to try to get through this, I feel like in starting this meeting today that um, I would like to, to um, talk about Sandy's legacy to me and to the state, um, her passion for the work that she did, 28 years, over 28 years here in the division, um, and far many more years than that, um, loving libraries and being dedicated to everything that libraries stand for. Um, the lessons I learned directly from Sandy, myself as a colleague and friend, are, um, I can't number them, I can't even begin to name them. Um, I will especially miss and try in her honor to emulate her in her ability to brainstorm uh, without bounds or barriers mm -hmm. um, in thinking um, about how to grow programs and how to encourage people uh, to be present and be part. Um, and I um, will miss her. Um, but I also plan to um, carry forward the legacy she's given all of us. And I, I feel personally like perhaps we ought to maybe start, if people want to, to chime in in, in perhaps their memories. I know we're hitting folks um, with very new news uh, to all of us, um, but maybe there are others that might like to um, say something or um, related to their uh, uh, relationship and, and knowledge of, of, of Sandy's love for all of us and, and the work that she chose to do, her life's work. That's a wonderful way to start today's discussion. Does anyone have anything here in the, in the room that they would like to share about Sandy? It's hard. It's this is Gladys Roberts. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Gladys. Wow, I'm just I'm I'm just absorbing. I'm I'm just so stunned and and so sad and just overwhelmed with emotions at the moment. I I, I just loved Sandy and I can't even begin to describe how important she was to me personally and professionally and how many 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 things she's helped me with over the years. Um, but I think when I remember Sandy, I'm always first going to think of her beautiful, unique style and the way that she was so comfortable in her own skin and so so good at being Sandy, that she was uniquely Sandy and, and just did that so well and brought, as you say, so many amazing talents and topics to the table and was able to so facilitate a group. Um, without interjecting her own opinions, but able to bring out um, everybody's ideas and, and encourage um, their unique personalities as well. So I'm just, I'm beyond shocked and stunned, but just love her and um, can't imagine uh, doing libraries without her, but I'm just, I, wow. Thank you, Gladys. And we do have some comments that have come in through the chat. Um, Tina said, 
I had no idea. I am so sorry to hear this. I'm sorry for the state library staff. Your loss is evident. Sandy made every meeting fun. I could listen to her all day. I will miss her. Thank you so much, yeah, Tina. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. And Mary Jane said, literacy icon, along with her husband, Jack, I'm still processing and my heart is broken. Yeah, we, yes, we are all nodding, yes. all nodding with you. And we know that they're together. And that is a comfort to us to know that Sandy and Jack are together. And I know, this is, oh, go ahead. As I say, this is George and Lake County. I've, I've been in Florida now for a year and a half and Sandy was one of the first people to reach out to me, welcome me as a new director and walk me down this perilous path of being a library director in Florida and in Lake County. And her advice was always wonderful. And she was there for me and listened and told me a lot about the history about Lake County that no one else knew because she'd been here for so long and had so much influence on everything. So it was quite stunning when I heard the news yesterday and you know, everybody in my office and in the library system here has sent their regards to me to pass on to everybody. But uh, she was just always so happy and cheerful and willing to help out, which I appreciated as well. Thank you so much, George. Um, yeah, I know just, this is Claudia. Uh, I know just how you feel. I haven't been here very long myself and uh, I felt like not only a novice uh, with her, but even a baby <laughs> uh, because she, as you said, was incredibly knowledgeable about the libraries in Florida and was passionate, totally passionate uh, and devoted to her work. Anybody else want to share anything? Okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we do have some suggested topics on our agenda, as you can see, um, but we're certainly not wed to those topics. Uh, we want to hear from you, and, and I'm sure that the, the people who are on the line want to hear what you're experiencing, what you'd um, like to share with people in terms of your successes, your challenges, um, your frustrations. Um, so please feel free to share. Okay, well, this is George in Lake County. I'll jump in. Right. Uh, just looking at the very first topic you guys had, uh, library security, something that uh, Lake County, if anybody who doesn't know, we're a, a cooperative with six county branches and then 10 member libraries. The town of Eustis just joined us recently, so we are now complete in whole in Lake County. Almost all of our member libraries have security cameras and other things, and none of the county locations do. And we're just getting into it. And I come from North Carolina, where most of my training was, and very much against cameras inside of library buildings for patron privacy. And I'm finding that's not the same here in Florida when I talk to my peers. Uh, some of my libraries in the county, the, the member libraries will have 14 to 16 cameras in a 14,000 square foot building, which seems like a lot. And I just didn't know what people were doing with cameras and public facilities where you have to be open. Uh, what's the general thought uh, that people have or what, what, what have you done? I know that that was a top, this is Claudia again, George. I know that the, uh, that topic was also brought up, I believe at the public library directors meeting. Um, and it is, it's a difficult topic, I think, in terms of, as you point out, privacy issues. And also, you know, from the standpoint of how do you protect your, your patrons, your staff, et cetera. 
Um, what other kinds of security was offered where you came from originally? Could you share a little bit about that? Well, yeah, most of the locations that uh, I'd worked in in North Carolina, the different systems hired security guards oh. as, as opposed to cameras. And, and some of the places where cameras were used, they were supposed to, they, they were in areas where you couldn't tell what a patron was doing, what they were looking at, what they were checking out or anything. So it would be down a hallway or on a stairwell or something, but not even over the public browsing area. So you couldn't see what they were looking at inside the building. But mostly it was private security, which mm -hmm. I know is expensive to bring in private securities or off air, uh, off uh, mm -hmm. service deputies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in this case, we're looking at just two cameras for each one of my county branches one outside over the door and then one inside over the door so you see who's coming and going. Mm -hmm. You know, a security camera doesn't do anything for you except show you what happened afterwards. Yeah. It doesn't offer a lot of security in that case. So I didn't know what anybody else might have been doing to help protect people in these crazy times. So Dee said, we use cameras in areas of the library that we can't see from the CERC desk, especially in the children's area. We do have posters that state cameras are in use. Hmm. Okay. I know we would have to post cameras. We've been told that by our county attorney already, or post notices, excuse me, um, about that. Okay. Who typically monitors these cameras? CERC desk? Yeah, it, yeah it, it's some of my member libraries. It looks like uh, the cameras are in the branch managers or the director's office specifically. I see. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know if they have, we would have them at the CERC desk specifically since most of the branches are just manned at least by or uh, operated by two people at a time usually. And Tammy said, I used cameras in my library in Missouri, but they did not do what we hoped they would do. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert said, we have cameras and we use off-duty sheriff's deputies in the afternoon. Is that typically after school's out? I was just about to ask the yeah. same question. Is that when more of your teens are in the library? Robert said after school. Yeah. Okay. This is Tam. Go this ahead. is Tammy from Manatee County. If I could just throw in one more thing, and I'm sorry about the background noise. I'm in at PLA right now, and um, we're jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I get to do it all though. Do this yes. be at the conference um, in Missouri. Um, what I found is uh, a greeter position, making eye contact with the people come in, was more effective than cameras but it's more staff intensive but the privacy factors uh, uh, it's a lot more secure and a lot more personal that way anyway i just wanted to throw that in there that's a great suggestion and mary said uh we have cameras in some of our libraries and the footage came in handy when some equipment was stolen from the computer lab the footage was shown to police and they identified the sub the suspect at one of the member libraries in my system, there was a complaint from a mother about an interaction with a teenage daughter and a male staff member, and the security footage was able to clear him of anything, which I thought was an interesting way to use it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a lot of cameras in a lot of different places for some of these locations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know in my library, we when I was in the field, we had them in our blind spots. And even then, we still had one blind spot in the children's section that just could not be seen. So then, as the, the youth librarian, I would make it a point to walk through that area more frequently after school. Hmm. Krista said, um, Oak, I'm assuming that's Okeechobee, <laughs> has cameras and has had them for several years. We don't monitor them, but check them if an incident occurs. We've had two thieves get sentenced to five years in jail for stealing display items, two separate incidences of vandalism and theft with youths caught. 
very much recommended cameras. Um, and Mary added that it's not actively monitored unless something happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is Dolly. Um, so somebody mentioned that cameras hadn't done what they thought it would be. Were you thinking if they would act as a deterrent? They act, actually, we weren't sure what they were going to do. The cameras were put in place before I arrived. But what I found is that they would, um, you know, we'd look to see if we could see when something was stolen. And it just ended up being kind of a, a reliance on some technology that didn't do what we were hoping mm -hmm. personal interactions would do to actually control the space. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was thinking. It, it did help sometimes when things were stolen. It was really nice that the one staff member was cleared of any potential wrongdoing. That's awesome. But just day-to-day -day controlling the space, I found that having cameras made us think we were controlling it, but it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else anyone would like to share on this topic? <laughs> um, if you'd like, we can switch to advocacy now. I'm curious how you all felt, those of you who were able to attend uh, Library Legislative Day um, or any other advocacy efforts, um, how they're going for you and what's been successful. Uh, what did you try that was new? Um, is there anything that you would have done differently? This is Gladys. I'll chime in just on the Library Day um, to put a plug in for Library Day and for FLA. Wow, these past two years um, have just been phenomenal in the arrangements and so forth. FLA has just done such a stellar job in putting it all together. It's so well organized. They make it so easy on us as the participants. They've got packets of information together. It's just it's it's a, a finely tuned, well-oiled machine at this point. Lisa and her crew have just done a phenomenal job. And as someone who's been doing Library Day for like 22 years, uh, it's just I'm so impressed with um, the way they're carrying it out now, and it's it's just very encouraging. And on on the other side note, um, I will say that our legislators have told us before um, that one year that that we missed doing Library Day because we were kind of in reorganization, um, they said, we, we noticed you weren't up here. And so even though it feels kind of futile, um, you feel like you just go through the motions and they tell you what you want to hear and then they do what they want to do. It's still, I think, very important that we have a presence there. And uh, I, I think FLA is really doing a super job with Library Day. Great, thank you so much for sharing that, Gladys. Anyone else, do you have something that you did locally that was um, impactful? Okay, well, we could move to... Before we leave that topic, okay. Claudia, if I might, this is Amy. Um, before we leave the advocacy topic, it would be, um, I think, um, remiss to not mention, if we did not mention, National Library Legislative Day, because that is coming up in early May, on May 4th and 5th. Lisa O'Donnell, our wonderful Florida Library Association Executive Director, will lead the Florida delegation um, at National Library Legislative Day. Um, so this is the time of year when Amy does um, un, uh, unabashed begging uh, to uh, ask people to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, to talk about the importance of federal funding for libraries. Um, uh, this is, again, where we've got a, 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 a proposed budget, that uh, proposed president's budget, uh, that does zero out the federal funding for a lot of programs. Um, uh, library programs, of course, yet once again, uh, have, are 
scheduled to be zeroed out. Of course, just that has not been successful in the last number of years, and I don't believe it'll be successful this year either. Um, I will say I know it's a long, long way to Washington, D.C. from Florida, and it is, but we're the third largest state, um, and we really need to have a very strong uh, group of folks who can tell the story about the importance of libraries in and library program, more importantly, library programs and services, and as they are supported with federal funds and other federal programs, whether it's E-rate, whether it's the Library Services Technology Act, whether it's copyright, I mean, there are all these federal laws and that impact census, right, right. So, right, we've got that, and the Marrakesh Treaty. I mean, there are all kinds of things that, on a national level, impact day to day what libraries do in the state, whether it's public libraries or academic libraries. Um, so, we really need a strong showing. So, I, 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 I do know that a number of people have already uh, told me that they are going to go to Washington D.C. on May fourth and fifth. Um, it's a great event organized by the American Library Association. They do some training uh, before you actually go up on Capitol Hill. Um, so I, I just would hope that you all um, perhaps are considering that um, for May 2020, and if not May 2020, May 2021, because mm -hmm. uh, this is an annual event um, and uh, federal support, both at legislative support um, as well as financial support is, is very important. So before we left the advocacy topic, I just wanted to right. throw in a plug yeah. for National Library Legislative Day. And May in the D.C. area is beautiful, as you may know, uh, so it's great to go before it gets too hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, May the 4th be with library. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. May 4th. That's right. the services library. <laughs> I've got all the corny jokes. Mm -hmm. um, and Robert said thank you. Was that thank you to Amy? Okay. Um, Robert said yes, ma'am, for the information. Ah. Okay. <laughs> um, let's now go to friends. Uh, um, I'm not sure if you know this, um, but we at, at uh, DLIS are planning, or we are working with the MLCs, with FLA, with Balsi, and others to um, have to to host a pre-conference at FLA this year on for and with staff who work with friends. Um, so we're real excited about that. Uh, and, of course, welcome any ideas that you might have, particularly about what your experience has been in working with friends or, um, you know, what your friends have talked to you about. Well, you know, we're, we're planning this and we're hoping to, to put out some feelers to get more information. But since I have you as a captive audience right now, I thought I might ask what... Um, what would you like to see in a pre-conference like this if you were to attend? This is George in Lake County. Um, right off the bat, uh, we are struggling with what probably everyone else is, declining membership and older membership. How do we attract uh, younger generation? How do you attract people that are busy and really can't spend as much time as you know, friends members in the past have done? with book sales and everything. So, and I'm hearing that across the board. Um, Mount Dora, Leesburg, and Cooper Memorial in my, locate, in my county all have fantastically large friends groups, but they're in bigger cities for Blake County. But almost all the other locations are struggling with membership under 10 or 15 okay. people. So recruiting younger people, more active volunteers, people that want to be involved with it and not just give money, although money's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I remember we spoke about this at the 2018 Public Library Directors meeting. Afterwards, we had the cohort of 100,000 to 400,000 size directors, and this was a topic as well. But I'm not sure what the answer is, and <laughs> I know everybody's thinking the same thing. Well, and George, thank you for that. This is Amy, and one of the things I'll chime in with with that we do have Beth 
um, from United for Libraries, I think Nolinsky. Um, so we will have a national representative there from United for Libraries at the pre-conference. So I know she'll bring us some information as she has gleaned it from across the states and across the, the country. Um, we are hoping to have some panel presentations um, to, to, you know, to learn from your peers and to learn from other folks who are struggling, if you will, with the same uh, issues, but maybe have found something that has worked someplace or, or have other, um, have questions, you know. So it's going to be a great um, opportunity to learn from each other and share perhaps, you know, definitely what's worked. And I always find it very um, refreshing to hear folks share what hasn't worked because there's lots of good learning mm -hmm. um, in those situations. I know it's a, a greater risk to actually admit in public what um, that something didn't work, um, but, um, but we're really excited about the pre-conference, the, the, the partners coming together to, uh, to co-sponsor the, the pre-conference and all the ideas that will be generated around that. That'll be the afternoon of May 12th, the day before uh, the public, li uh, excuse me, the day before the Florida Library Association conference. This is George again. Is, that gonna, is this going to be geared more towards uh, working staff or towards friends groups or a mixture? Um, at this point, it's a mixture. Um, if you read, if you have, if you've already registered for the FLA conference like I have, um, you will see the, the, the written, what, uh, quite honestly and frankly, what I wrote up, um, which is going to change, does a target library staff who, who coordinate or, or, you know, are somehow responsible for friends groups. At this point in talking with the partner groups um, this week, uh, we're going to broaden that so that it will be indeed for those library staff, but will also be um, what we hope to attract some actual friends members as well to attend and have some of the friends leadership from different friends groups also there and represented. So I hope it'll be a mix, George. So right now, if you've read the language um, and it sounds different than what I'm telling you, that would be a true statement because <laughs> when I wrote it, I, 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 it, that does not have the friends, the friends membership or friends leadership angle um, are, are included in the uh, blurbage, and that will be revised um, in the next week. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we were, I'm sorry, is there something? Oh, I, we do have a couple of questions Go in on. the chat. So I just want to acknowledge, I don't want to cut this conversation no, off, okay. but I just want to acknowledge for Tammy and Dee that we see your question and we will certainly get to it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Um, um, I do want to say that the, uh, it was an interesting conversation to, this week with our, our partners um, who are helping us plan this. And one of the things that, and I want to mention too, that this is one of the things that Sandy really wanted was to have um, library staff who are engaged in working with friends groups to bring a friend, um, potentially, you know, the president or chair or whatever of the friends group, um, so that it would be a, a mixed group of people with a lot of interaction, not only networking among, you know, their own friends groups or whatever, but also um, having that that mix um, that we think is important. Um, so just wanted to mention that too. So go ahead. <laughs> well, and I think speaking as one of the millennials on the, on the BLD team, um, if you're really wanting to target younger adults, and I don't mean that in like the teen YA, but um, adults who are younger, um, you may want to tap into, if you already kind of have a captive audience, like at your story times, you've got stay at home moms or guardians who are there at the library already. Um, I'm always an advocate for asking the population you wanna reach how we can best reach them. Um, so you may already have some groups coming into the library that you can sort of snag their attention for a minute to get some feedback um, on how they might be able to help. Because I know, I mean, my story time parents were, were willing to do anything. We just had to be able to ask them the right question. Um, hmm. So that just might be just an idea to throw on the table. <laughs> um, Tammy asked, has anyone used their friends groups as an advocacy group with local government? That's a great question. Hmm. 
I know I heard Sandy give this advice a lot to directors that if you have a strong friends group, she would always encourage directors to make them aware of any issues early on that might need advocacy because sometimes, as you all know, you as the director and as a county or city head might get to a point where you're not allowed to say anything. Um, so I know that that was one piece of advice that she gave out a lot is let them know early and soon so that way if somebody needed to speak up and the director couldn't, there was still somebody who had an idea of what might be going on. Good point. And Mary Jane said, in my former years, yes, all caps. <laughs> they can be invaluable in this arena, as can advisory board and trustees. And Robert said, we have had some of our friends get up and speak at budget meetings about the value of the library and its programs and services. And Mary Jane said, and yes, Sandy was <laughs> passionate, again, all caps, passionate on this topic. And Mary said, whenever something library related comes before the county commission, always try to get the friends group to attend the meeting and dress the same so the commissions know who they are. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you tell me to wear matching t-shirts, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm there for that. <laughs> I'm always asking for shirts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Dee asked, any advice on getting friends on boards with what we are trying to do at the library? Our current friends were more helpful when we had less money. Our friends just came into a large amount of money, and now they are particular about what they spend it on. Ooh. And Tammy said, all great tactics about the friends and commissions. I feel like I've heard several directors bring up this issue over mm -hmm. the last few years about how to align their friends group with the actual library's needs. Okay, any more input on the friends topic? Now, Sandy had a uh, this next topic, identity concerns, public library as a department of a city or county. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what she means by that, but you probably do. Uh, would you like to share what you're thinking? Um, I just, um, Andy responded saying, many of our friends are very active with other groups, organizations, fundraisers, which bring them into contact with city council members, et cetera. Uh, friends of the library have great elevator speeches that seem to come naturally, and I appreciate that immensely. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I probably jumped the gun. Did anybody have a, a magical solution for D? <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, getting back to the identity concerns, does anyone have anything they would like to share about that topic? Uh, whether you have, um, you know, challenges uh, within your city or county in terms of, let's say, I'm, I'm assuming this might have something to do with being part of a um, a larger entity like a like parks and rec or something like that this is amy and and my uh, sort of guess and maybe somebody who's on the call can tell us 
I'll tell you where I see it is as it relates to the web pages. Mm -hmm. There are some oh, library okay. systems mm -hmm. where the city or county puts up the web page, which means it's really not effective for the library. And, my, and I would hazard to guess it's not the web page the library would really like to have. Okay. But because they're a part of that particular city or that particular county, and it really, it, I don't know that it per, is too much related to size mm -hmm. or geography, mm -hmm. um, but there are some uh, web, library web pages that are, it's, you know, you might as well be looking at the tax assessor's web page, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's just like that. It's just the part of government, and it's doesn't have the information. And so there is a some degree a loss of the identity of the library and all of the richness of the services um, because it's just a page dangling off of the city page or the county page. I mm -hmm. So I, I wonder if it's sort of played there. Obviously there are other ways you could have it in acute terms, but that's the thing that came yeah, to mind to, to me uh, first off. And it kind of makes me think of what I think a lot of us have heard uh, Renee Roundtree from Washington County say a lot when she has spoken, especially to new directors. One of the first things she says is, you are no longer a librarian. You are a county or city yeah. head. And so I know I've heard her speak a lot about having to sort of reassess that role and how, you know, as far as a lot of city leaders or county leaders are concerned, a lot of directors are just another count, you know, department head versus a librarian. So I wonder if maybe that's where some of that was coming from. Um, Tammy did said yes. Has anyone had any luck with re redirect web addresses? Hmm. And Andy said, D seems odd. Uh, do you have new board members? Have of them? Have any of them communicated ideas about new or different goals? And that's going back to Dee's original question on the friends about aligning um, visions. Especially with new money. Mm -hmm. So two questions on the table. One about redirect web addresses. I'm not technical enough to be very helpful in that regard. Yes, this is George in Lake County. Yeah, that's beyond anything <laughs> I've had to deal with. Um, in Lake County, we were the second county department to get a website, what, 15 years ago probably, <laughs> and we're just slated now for a new one. Mm -hmm. And I found in this position and in previous positions, it's just a lot of communication with the IT department and my boss to say what's important, what do we think the patrons want from the website? What do we want from the website? Uh, it's been a lot of times the IT person or communications might have one vision for what they think a library w website should look like, but it doesn't match what's what's being used. I mean, we have Google Analytics on our catalog. We've got so many tools that tell us what people are doing. And we ask, you know, what do you want to do? And most, li most time it's like, we'll just make it like Amazon, make it easy to search and find what I'm looking for. Can you deliver so my books in two days? Do what? The, can you deliver my checkouts to my house in two days? Uh, uh, actually, we have a faster delivery service than um, Amazon does if you count it just getting to its location. <laughs> you still have to go check it out, but we have 80 or 90 percent of all of our deliveries in Lake County uh, patron requests happen in a day. Wow, that's wow, wonderful. That's yeah. We have worked very hard on that, and like it's been one of our efficiencies that I get you know, good marks for. Mm -hmm. um, but in the case of using the website and what it, what people want is figuring out, and of course, Lake County, we've got the county library website, then we've got the library information on the county website, and then each of the 10 member libraries has a presence on their own city mm -hmm. or municipality's mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of control, but we try to help mm -hmm. them craft a better message or get the information out that they need. And and pointing back and forth when needed. Uh -huh. So there's a lot we wrangle here in Lake County. So did you have to um, reach out to your ID, IT department in order to make that work or did they reach out to you? <laughs> Who was the most proactive? Uh, we, we were, we were just, what do we need? They won't let us touch many things. So we have to be in constant contact with them about changing and it's the communications department, the PR, that handles every website 
for the county and the constitutional officers as well. So they're overburdened, but it's just a matter of communicating what the needs are and what happens uh, in, in this case. Just sending them messages and telling them what we want and what they want and what can we do. We understand <laughs> perfectly. And Dee responded to Andy's question and said, same board members, their goals seem to be opening a coffee shop off location, not helping with programming, et cetera. Does, um, does your Friends of the Library group have like a formal mission or vision statement or do they operate under the library? Because I'm just thinking if they have one and what they're wanting to do kind of veers so far. Oh, sorry. I said, do, does your friends group have a mission or vision statement that they operate under or do they operate sort of under the library's mission and vision? Because just brains, brainstorming, if they're kind of veering so far off course from the mission and vision that you all are operating under, then it might just be a helpful tool to pull them back. They say their mission is literacy. A one word mission, that's nice. <laughs> it's easy to remember. <laughs> Okay, any other points on identity concerns? Um, now we can sort of transition into digital purchasing and latest evolving technologies. Uh, I don't know uh, what you're experiencing in your library. Um, these are very, digital pur purchasing is a very specific uh, area of concern, I guess. Um, any comments on what your uh, what your workflow is like, or how you're managing these purchases, and what kinds of licenses you're being faced with when you're making purchase? I'm, I'm assuming that's purchasing of digital content. Um, Claudia, this is Amy. Uh, one of the things that I'm wondering, um, with about 15 minutes left in the call, um, you know, is there anything else people have other questions for them? You know, uh, this is a great agenda, and I think it was pulled together from topics that were that were suggested at, at registration. But maybe there are other topics that people would like to talk about, absolutely, um, or questions they might like to ask of their colleagues or or ask of us. I suppose as they're thinking about that, I'll take um, just a second to talk about the fact that we have what is now in essence two weeks left in legislative session. Um, that I, I believe that they will do their level best to end on time um, and, and two weeks from now, two, two weeks and one day um, and, and have a state budget because of course with the election looming, they all want to go home, um, yes, and, and we, we'd be happy to have downtown Tallahassee back for mm -hmm. sure. Um, certainly there's a lot of, of, of headway that needs to happen on the budget. The House and Senate are not in alliance uh, or, or in alignment, better words, anywhere in the budget process. And so I, I will, I believe we'll have budget conferees named, if not already today, sometime today or tomorrow, and that that will uh, be happening very soon, that sort of really intensive budget conferencing portion that happens at the end of um, at the end of session um, and, and at that point we'll have we'll be seeing additional budget scenarios coming out from the conferees um, so that's that's yet to, to be uh, 
to be uh, on the docket. Certainly there's plenty of legislation still left on the table and with two weeks and a day left, there's plenty more but bills that will be heard and will be passed. Um, I'm not really aware of, of many bills that are uh, library specific. Um, we do have on the House and Senate side um, some cleanup language going through, um, and it is going through as, as is anticipated. So that's, when we say clean up, we mean, you know, we read through the statutes. When we can't sleep at night, we read through the statutes um, and find things that um, need to be changed or should be changed just because when they were written, that was the way we needed to do things. But these days, we now have computers. Uh, things have changed a lot since the 1960s. Um, and so we don't always have to do things the way the legis legislation was originally written. So we do have a, a cleanup bill on either side going through and that's that's going through um, um, as, as anticipated and I believe will uh, pass and be uh, in effect in, in July. Um, I don't know that there's, there's much out else out there legislatively that uh, directly impacts us, but if you have particular questions, um, you certainly could could, could ask those questions related to session or anything else um, that might be, you know, sort of uh, boiling around in your head. And I know we have a couple of other updates that we want to give you before um, before we're we're done for the day. But um, are there any particular questions for any staff member or things we need to research, find out more about? And I suppose, uh, again, this is Amy, you know, I keep saying this, I'm a true extrovert, I don't like silence. <laughs> so maybe what we'll do is while you're still thinking of your questions or while some of you are typing in the chat your questions, which has been great to hear so much, um, so much chatter, even in, even uh, quietly through chat and through Casey's voice, why don't we do our, go ahead and do our updates now and then people can still be formulating questions. So sure. Claudia, you want to? Um, we're very lucky and pleased to have uh, our colleague, Kathy Maloney, with the State Library here with us to talk about the resource sharing platform. Kathy? Hi, everyone. Um, as, as you probably know, the division has been working for a while to um, get a vendor to come into Florida and create a statewide resource sharing platform. So library catalogs, no matter what the vendor, be it Circe, Polaris, Koha, so they can all talk to each other. Um, and then the patron could request that item. And this would save staff time and also allow the patron a little more ownership over their, over their request. Um, I'm happy to say that we might have a signed contract by next week. Um, and I have a list of over 20 libraries that have already said they're, they're willing to be the first in line, our first skinny pigs. <laughs> so as soon as we have that last signature on the contract, I will be in touch with libraries and starting to sign them up. So Kathy, this is Amy. Can you tell everybody on the call um, the the vendor that is signing the contract with us? The the vendor is Autographics, and that is who we who we wanted. Um, they have done the same thing in several other states, almost exactly what we want to do. So we're we're really excited about this and hoping that um, after this first year, maybe we can start talking to other states and work something out where we could work with them and have this uh, nationwide platform. Very cool. So if you are interested in being among the first libraries on board, just reach out to me and let me know. I will be sending out emails again, hopefully next week. Awesome, thank you so much, Kathy. We're, we're very excited here, and I hope that y'all are just as excited because this is a new, sort of a new adventure for all of us, and um, certainly one that, uh, you know, engages us in the spirit of collaboration, and we're real, real happy about that. Is there anything in the chat that we need to? Nothing in the chat. 
Um, a couple of other announcements we just want to, or really deadlines, I guess you would say, uh, that we want to be sure you all are aware of in case you're interested. Um, the LSTA grant application deadline, again, is March the 16th. 1-6, that is, if you can hear me. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between 15 and 16. But anyway, um, so if you're interested in submitting an application, uh, we are more than happy to review any drafts um, that you might have. So feel free to give us a call about that. Uh, the construction grant applications are due on May the 1st. That's May the 1st. Um, and this, the grant agreements for state aid have been signed and mailed to libraries, and we're working on payment requests now. So just wanted to give you updates about that information. And, and Claudia, this is Amy. I have another update that okay. might be of interest to the, to the group. Although I suppose I do have, I realize today I have a division update in one month. So I suppose with all my updates, maybe yeah, I, I may preempt myself. <laughs> but I'll have a little more to talk about at that point too. But um, one of the things that um, that I know that you and I have been working on and several, several other folks in the Bureau of Library Development is working to get a contract for the next return on investment mm -hmm. study. Mm -hmm. And of course, at this point, we um, are in um, getting ready to contract with the University of Florida specifically with Beaver, which is the Bureau of Economic and Business Research, Research I think. I hope I got that acronym correct. All I we, think about is Johnson. Beaver. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beaver is how we know them. Um, but anyway, we're really excited. This will be the first time we've worked with them in the University of Florida. So we do have the study specifications nailed down. Um, we would not, you probably have heard me say this before, um, we would have a... Um, we would not have the data itself, the first part of the data, until January 2021. So it, it, is a, it will take us a, a, a while to get the study done, but we are, are working on the contract and we'll be working, and you'll be hearing more about that at public library directors meeting and, and other times throughout the year. So that's, that's good. And the other thing I was thinking about was uh, the statewide digital initiative. Um, We've been talking about that for a while, and um, we are getting ready to have um, an ITN in the next couple of months where we'll be talking to vendors about a statewide digital platform um, that would be available for um, any cultural heritage organization that would like to uh, participate. So, um, Dolly, do, do you have anything you want to add to that? That's sort of been, we've been talking about it for a little <laughs> while, and um, now we're actually getting to a, a procurement kind of yeah. stage and that's exciting i think i i can hear george taylor's ears perk up I over am. the yeah. over the I, i'm i'm listening i'm listening <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh the uh, invitation to negotiate is going to be put out over the vendor bid system so basically it's going to just be a call to folks out there to hear what they've got that they can do for us uh, on our side, what we have is a list about two miles long about what we want and whether somebody out there can fulfill all of our dreams or not is what we're, we're finding to, we're going to be finding out through this. Um, but the plan is to have some sort of hosting platform so that libraries can share, you know, arrange, describe, catalog, share, create exhibits with their own digitized content um, with their own branding and their own landing page and their own ability to control what they show to the public. Um, that's the plan. That's what we're aiming for. And there will also be a, we have a preservation, preservation component mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. So that uh, at the very least, you know, the, the images and the data won't be lost. Um, and at the most, it would be a place that would have uh, a long-term storage ability for uh, special collections or other things that we don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. So that, because we're releasing the ITN and it, um, we're, pro we're probably talking into for our next fiscal year yeah. before we have, I mean, we'll be able to give updates related to where we are in the procurement process, but I would imagine it may be another at least six to nine months before we're under contract with a vendor, vendor and that would right. probably be on a relatively fast track. Yeah. So just know we're working on it we um, and Dolly's uh, spearheading that and 
really, you know, it's, it's quite exciting. We've been looking forward to having this uh, get to this point, let alone the next points. Um, yeah. And it's coming. We can we can see it. We can see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> quite exciting. Absolutely. Before before we close out in a in in a few minutes, um, I have a bittersweet announcement as well. Um, our own Melissa Hook will be <laughs> leaving us to go on a new journey in her career. And uh, she, this will be the last time that she'll be involved in the director's discussion. Um, she has been an integral and wonderful colleague and part of this uh, bureau. Uh, and not only the bureau, but all of DLIS and on up to the secretary's office. Um, she is a phenomenal person and a, a great asset and we will miss her very much. Uh, so. The good news, this is Amy, the good news is she's not going too far. We're going to still be in touch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Melissa, do you want to say, is it okay if you yeah. tell everybody um, sure. how we're going to stay in touch? Yeah, I'm going to work with CSLP, which means that I will still get to work with the Bureau um, no matter where I am. So that's, yeah. I'm really, really happy about that. So mm -hmm. although it's bittersweet and I'm very sad to leave BLD, um, it means that I get to be closer to my family and still stay in touch. So. I'm, I'm very thankful that I've had the experiences I've had here. And um, and I think we still have a few more webinars before my last day. So this isn't a total goodbye yet, but it's coming. I would be a lot less calm if it was. Well, that is said, Melissa, we will miss you. I'm totally adding inflection in here, <laughs> my sentiments. She said, you've been such a joy and delight to work with. Robert said, Melissa, we will miss you. Mary Jane said, best wishes, Melissa, sending you abundant best always. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And Andy said, congratulations, Melissa. Best wishes on your new adventure. <laughs> so we have three more minutes. Do anybody else, do, do anybody, does anybody else have anything? All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. And thank you for coming to spend the hour with us and with each other. Thank you all. Please be in touch. We're here to help you.